I want to expand our conversation this morning a bit beyond mindfulness to, to wisdom and compassion. And the, and the actual importance of in the space that we are in where we've all, everyone in this room has made some level of commitment to, um, to changing the world, to being, to taking our, ex, our next own individual step around being aware and awake and compassionate and whole. And by extension, I truly believe you can't make that individual commitment without then having an extension to the community that we're part of and bringing that compassion and awareness and awakeness to the community that we're part of. And that can take the form of um, a simpler, more uh, focused program, or it can take the form of creating an environment in which conflict and difference of opinion has, has space and voice. So um, I'm watching the clock, which as John said yesterday, in a minute we're gonna get a whole bunch more time <laughs> as it starts going up. And, um, and I think perhaps in the time we have um, remaining, it might be valuable since you all attended this part of this program today to hear a little bit about what we're doing. For each of you, just to mention a couple of the, some of the experiments that we've done or some of the ways that you think we've been able to help bring some wisdom practice into the environment that we're in and we'll, we'll cut our content down in respect for the overall schedule. Um, remembering the, the meta message of, of the importance of diversity, compassion and community um, and the complexity and conflict that that brings. So may shall I hand shall it I say back to you? Shall I say something about mastery? Yes. So my friends, <clears throat> when doing this work, I think that everything that you do, uh, there's one paramount word, and that word is skillfulness. Skillfulness in the beginning, skillfulness in the middle, skillfulness in the end. Skillfulness in the beginning refers to the champion, yourself. And there are two aspects. And one of them, Bill just beautifully demonstrated, which is your own practice. Deepening your own practice so that you'll be strong in calmness of mind, serenity, in uh, wisdom, and most importantly, kindness and compassion. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, you embody the teaching, then you'll be ready to become a champion for this work, like Bill and Karen just did. And the second aspect of skillfulness in the beginning is skillfulness at explaining the teaching. So for example, uh, learning the science, the neuroscience, learning the, uh, how it applies to business. So that will be useful. So that's one, skillfulness in the beginning. Skillfulness in the middle is again what uh, Karen just talked about, which is extending the benefits from the champion, from the self to others. First, others individually, and then organization. For example, questions you might be asking, how would people most benefit, right, individuals? Are they under stress, right? Do they, do they need compassion, right, and so on. Addressing those needs. And then also as a team, what does a team need? So things that Karen talked about. And lastly, um, oh, by the way, I have a dirty little secret, uh, which is that in Google, we're we are only beginning to figure out the organization. So we haven't figured it out yet, uh, yes. <laughs> So this is where you can kick our ass, right? not, not in other places. Uh, the holy grail of this, my friends, the holy grail is that everybody in the organization, especially the leaders, everybody is wise and compassionate, thereby creating the conditions for world peace. That's the holy grail. And finally, skillfulness in the end, which is in addition to all that, creating support for continuous practice for everybody, using technology, using community, such that you can continue to broaden and deepen the practice everywhere. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you, May. So the part that I was going to speak about was about navigating your organization and sort of creating networks within an organization and I'd like to take a nod from the, from the protesters and also really think about what that means for community. Because the way that we establish this is to, uh, at a practical level, about making the, the possibility of mindfulness flower in the world, is to find out who your true believers are and really nurture and support them. 
through the lights, I can see a lot of the, the people at Google who volunteer their time to make these programs happen and supporting them. And also then looking at, at executives and even functions like HR to see, can we do things like hold classes that really emphasize these are the values of this organization and to really espouse the best values that an organization can put forward. Um, in particular, there's the stuff that really comes to mind easily for a technology organization like cognitive improvement and um, uh, uh, stress management or sustainable high performance. Uh, and also the stuff that Meng is really putting the emphasis on in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, compassion and ethics and what that means in the world. And then how can you create these sort of networks within an organization where you can bring that best part of it forward, where it's more likely to flower? And even though we're talking about pretty, pretty big concepts, even some of the stuff the protesters brought up that's really important, like wealth inequality, it's also really important to realize the way that you make progress in those areas is pretty work-a-day. It's creating these networks of your true believers, your executives, the ones who are making decisions at resource time, the skeptics, the people who are outside of your circle, and then bringing them all into community uh, with one another. And then also leading. You know, in a technology company, the cognitive improvement and concentration parts are the easy sell. And what we're trying to do, now that we have a certain amount of credibility within our organization, is then bring the compassion and the ethics part of it. Uh, that's always been there. You know, the, the subtitle of Meng's book is, is about world peace and to sort of give it equal footing uh, with the stuff that, uh, that's, that's maybe the, the foot in the door material. So that's the work that, uh, that Meng, Karen, and I are orienting ourselves towards. Great. And um, perhaps one very um, kind of practical example, just since uh, part of the promise of our talk was some things that you could try at home. Uh, the leadership team of which I'm a part, so uh, my boss brought together all of us on his team who, are, who lead people operations at Google and said, okay, this sort of meditation mindfulness stuff, a lot of people are talking about it. So let's do something about that in our meetings. So we invited Meng and Bill to join us um, and some of uh, our colleagues. And we begin every meeting with a two-minute meditation. And it's been, and, and these guys come in and, um, and they lead us and, and it's up to them. Some days it's a loving kindness meditation. Some days it's a, a breathing exercise. Um, we kind of do whatever they tell us to. We figure those two minutes are theirs. And, um, but they're really ours. And after about, um, I don't know, four or five months, I guess, Laszlo said to us one day after they left, so you guys still want to do this? And we all said, yeah. And then he had a hunch that maybe we were saying yes because he's our boss or because it's like the cool thing to say, of course, I want to meditate. And so he said, well, I'm not really sure anymore. I don't know. I mean, couldn't we use that time for something else? And then what he was really doing was trying to see whether anyone would bite and say, yeah, I'm not so sure either. And the, um, the number one skeptic in the room, who we all actually looked to when he said that, said, well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm a better person for those two minutes, so I think we should keep doing it. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. And uh, so then he said, well, if we all think it's a good idea, then why don't we roll it out to the entire organization, starting with all of people operations? And we all said, no, <laughs> the point isn't, it seems to, seems to be helping us, let's, let's push. The point is, let's continue the experiment and let's talk about what's working for us and let's make this available to other people as well as other kinds of things. And he said, well, there, what other kinds of things? So we've been experimenting. Um, some days we substitute in the meditation with a gratitude exercise. We do a quick round the room, what are you grateful for? Um, someone a couple of weeks ago said, I'd actually like to experiment a little bit with Tai Chi and see if we could create a similar state of presence through something more physical. So while we're doing that experimentation, we're also then each taking that into the organizations that we lead and support and thinking about how we can basically start the conversation. So it, I present that or share that really as a, just a, again, kind of a practical example of something that we're experimenting, experimenting with. Now, um, these guys couldn't leave it at that, and they've gone and created 15 two-minute videos that we can load into our video conferencing service so that anyone can start a meeting with a two-minute meditation led by a master. 
And, and that's just sort of the beauty of the opportunity to try things, see how it goes, make resources available. If people want to take advantage of the resources, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. And I think that's, you know, again, kind of a micro example of the posture of respect I wanted to share with you today. And, um, and as, we, as we close, I'd like to really thank my colleagues for their um, professionalism and their compassion and for all of you for being in this with us. Thank Remember, you. my friends, do, do try this at home. Remember, you are professionals. Thank you. <laughs>